Hey, this is Matt from Investiquant. Today is Monday, November 30th, 2020, and today is the last trading day of the month. It's coming on the heels of a recent rally in the market. So uh, we had a request this morning to take a look at that type of pattern where it's the last day of the month and you're coming off 52 week highs. That's something that we do have available within Discover, so I figured why not give it a look uh, since that's something somebody was wanting to see. So let me go ahead and set this pattern up in Discover and we'll run it real quick and see what the results have been historically on the last trading day of the month coming off of a 52 week high. So I've got all four instruments loaded here. The setup we're gonna be looking at is based upon going long at the open of regular trading hours, which is 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, exiting at the close, 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm not going to use an opening filter for this test. I just want to look at the last trading day of the month and a 52-week high. Um, if you wanna add an opening filter to this, you, know, you could add gap up or gap down within this opening filter section if you wanna dig into this deeper, but I'm not going to do that in this instance. Uh, next, I'm gonna go into price patterns and I'm going to say the prior day was a 52 week high close. I'm gonna grab that over here on the active today section. You've got a long list of things that are true for today, but day after a 52 week high close is down here under the new highs section. So you can just click on that to add it to the test. You can see I've done that, it's up here in the header section. Next, I'm going to go into the calendar section, and this is where I can say it is the last trading day of the month. And I can grab that from this unique days section right here, hit equals next to it to grab it from active today either way. And then I'm going to hit view results. And here we go. So these are the results of going long on the last trading day of the month when the prior day closed at a 52 week high close. Now, since it's at a 52 week high close, I didn't need to add that it's above a 200 day or 10 day because by definition, it's gonna be above that. Um, and by doing so, 52 week high close, the prior day, last trading day of the month, we've got 15 samples in the S&P. So not a whole lot of samples here. Of course, with this only being a once a month pattern, it can't happen all that often. Uh, but when you add 52 week high close to it, you get just 15 samples here in the S&P. The Nasdaq's had more samples coming in at 26, the Dow 17, and the Russell 14. And if you look at the win rates on these, all of them are under 50%. You've got the S&P at 40% of these closing above the open by the end of the session. Uh, the Nasdaq 46%, the Dow very similar at 47%, and the Russell is the weakest at 36%. If we take a look at the average win, average loss, they're fairly similar in the S&P. Uh, for the NASDAQ, the average loss, just a touch bigger than the average win. Um, in the Dow, the average win a little bit larger than the average loss. And then in the Russell, which has the weakest win rate, also has the largest average loss to average win. Um, and these stats here don't look all that different from the overall bias for last trading day of the month, which is typically a bearish bias. And if you wanna dig into that on your own as well, all you gotta do is remove that uh, 52 week high close from this pattern. Just look at the last trading day of the month and it's generally a bearish day as well. So um, it looks like when you put it in the context of coming off a 52 week high close, it doesn't change the stats significantly. Obviously you get a smaller sample size, but it's not enough to take away um, that bearish bias that typically shows up on the last trading day of the month. So hopefully you found that helpful. Good luck today, guys, and we will see you next time.